speeds to for 26. Williams removing his partner Hussey on 37 in the space of four minutes. Bowing for a more focused approach without the pressures of captaincy, Damian Martin once again fell to a rash shot. John Davison's got a wicket. He's got Damian Martin out on a full toss. His departure for 14, the third wicket to fall for just 20 runs. WA at lunch, three for 85. New skipper Tom Moody was another to falter after grafting a start. Next man in, Adam Gilchrist, made the most of a life, posting a swashbuckling 82 before trying to slog one too many. High in the air, this is peak, he could have got a wicket, he has, it's Matthew Elliott's taken the catch. Also dropped early, Justin Langer played his way into form, helping short. WA get that's back on top in the final two sessions. Might run for four, will, that's his hundred. A free scoring day for South Australia against Queensland at the Adelaide Oval. At stumps on day one, the Crow leaders are six for 290. Paul Nobes, Greg Blewett and Darren Webber, all scoring half centuries. South Australia made a quick start with Nobes and Blewett easily disposing of the Queensland attack. Bulls bowler Andrew Bickle wasn't only taking a caning, he was also having trouble staying on his feet. Adding salt to the wound, Nobes then hit Bickle to boundary. The Bulls thought their luck had changed when they appealed to have Nobes dismissed when he'd reached 28. And South Australia none for 61, but the umpire disagreed. 15 minutes before lunch, Blue had recorded 50 runs, taking South Australia along to none for 101. The horrors continued for Bickle, he dropped Blewett as the Croatias continued to confidently add runs. Then, four minutes before lunch, a major breakthrough for the Bulls. Blewett was dismissed for 51 when he was caught off Jackson and South Australia won for 104. After the break, Nobes brought up his half century, but when he reached 56, he was caught by Bickle of Tazalar, South Australia 2 for 142. Weber then opened the shoulders, as did new partner Darren Lehman, who was punishing square of the wicket until he was out for 32 just before tea. South Australia finishing the session 3 for 197. Weber reached his 50 as the home side batted strongly, but he was to remain at the half century, caught behind off Ma and South Australia 4 for 208. Brayshaw managed only 25 before he was sent back to the pavilion. A major blow to the Crow Eaters shortly after, Captain Jamie Siddons out for 24. The South Australian skipper not happy he'd been dismissed so cheaply. Well, the West Indies have won their first match on tour. They've beaten the Queensland 11 by seven wickets in Toowoomba. Carl Hooper, Phil Simmons and Captain Richie Richardson all having strong games. No shortage of action in the fourth test between South Africa and England at Port Elizabeth. At lunch on day four, the home side is two for 34 in its second innings, holding an overall lead of 199. But it was day three where controversy arose, with match referee Clive Lloyd warning both teams for improper behaviour. South African spinner Paul Adams, with his very unorthodox action, snared his first test scalp. But it was the dismissal, the dismissal of Mike Atherton on 72 that caused the commotion. Atherton copying a lecture from the match referee over his look of disgust at being given out court down leg side. Is a beautiful That's in there, that could be out. Or it could be over the top, it's beautifully caught. That's it, that's the one they wanted. Beautiful piece of work from Tim Nielsen there. Oh, that's got rid of him. Is he happy about that and why shouldn't you be? Now the pressure back on South Australia. He's out. It's a first piece of food. Sorry, no, 
Gigi Salve il Giovanni Viola That's an absolutely glorious song Shot the field for Elvin is out. Oh, that's close. That is out. Flop. And again, Sittens this time over wide mid on again, and that should be four more. Picked it, picked it beautifully and placed it beautifully. Now the race away from the court. Bowley, he's got through. Down the inside. The confidence shout, he's out. Caught behind. And gone. Out. A beautiful catch too from Jamie Sitton. Again, a sweep shot. This time he could be out and in, straight down the throat of Ben Johnson. Shout, big confidence shout, he's given him, he's given him, Williams has claimed the wicket of Paul Nove. That's out. Brought behind. The home side today claimed first innings points after Queensland was all out for 200. When rain forced to halt, halt to play, South Australia was leading by 283 runs. Really the the South Australians took do. just 20 minutes to end Queensland's first innings. Tazalar caught by Paul Nobes, the Bulls all out for 200, 131 runs in arrears of the home side. Rain delayed the start of South Australia's second innings by about an hour and a half. As the sun started shining, so did Paul Nobes in the quest for quick runs. But after scoring it better than a run a minute, he was out for 18 off Andy Bickle. Darren Webber came to the crease with similar intentions. He and Blewett played in tandem until the opener on 24 became keeper Wade Seacombe's second victim, this time off Rao. Webber played beautifully and appeared set for a half century until he popped up a simple return catch to Jimmy Ma when he was on 42. Queensland failed to produce enough turn to tie down Darren Lehman. He plundered the Bulls' slow bowlers in the search to set Queensland a big total tomorrow. Just as the players left the oval for tea, more rain fell, further delaying any play. John Parrington, 10 News. And Western Australia is in a strong position to claim outright points in the Shield match against Victoria in Perth. Victoria was forced to follow on after being dismissed for 215 in its first innings. Matthew Elliott scoring an unbeaten century. Batting a second time, Victoria a short time ago was none for 84, st still trailing by 114 runs. And the Test Series in South Africa is still up for grabs, with England holding on for a draw in the fourth Test. Set a victory target of 328, England finished at 3 for 189. The final Test will begin in Cape Town on Tuesday. The team may have peaked too early for next year's World Cup. The comments came as the out-of-form Windies prepare to take on Australia in their must-win World Series Cup match tomorrow. A few seasons ago, New Year's Eve would have been a day of leisure for the West Indies, but times have certainly changed. The once almighty Calypso Kings face extinction from the World Series Cup. The visitors are yet to win a match, and throughout this tour have struggled in all aspects of their game. With next month's World Cup fast approaching, the West Indies will be using tomorrow's crucial encounter against Australia at the SCG to begin their revival. Over the years, we have, we have dished out a lot of punches, you know, and... Um no, you know, we've been getting a little bit, but um, we just got to hang in there and um, try and get ourselves out of this hole that we're in, and we're pretty confident that we can do so. The Australians were rewarded with a day off after yesterday's impressive 10-wicket victory over Sri Lanka at the MCG. It's expected that selectors will name their World Cup squad tomorrow. The headache for the selection committee is who will fill the much-debated 14th and final position in the Australian touring team. Some of the main contenders for the spot are David Boone, Greg Blewett and Victorian captain Dean Jones. Despite Boone's test century in Melbourne, he has been overlooked for tomorrow's fixture, while a last-minute push from Victoria for Jones will place pressure on the national selectors. Simon Pajaka, 10 News. His way back into the limelight with selection in Australia's squad for Cricket's World Cup. He was named along with fellow Victorian Damien Fleming in the squad of 18, which will be trimmed by four later this month before the Aussies leave for the subcontinent. 
and good news for South Australia with forgotten test players Greg Blewett and Tim May also back in favour. Oh, yeah. Himself an 11 wicket haul for the match and six valuable points for South Australia. Queensland began chasing 384 runs for victory. Trevor Barsby the first casualty in an extraordinary tale of woe. Hayden and Love travelled along smoothly until the stand-in skipper scooped May to Brayshaw and then Love shouldered arms to Gillespie in a remarkable repeat of Barsby's dismissal. Jimmy Ma didn't want to use his bat either and was adjudged LBW to May. At least Andrew Simons wasn't afraid to put bat on ball. He smashed that one. And again, this time in the air, that is way over. That is fine. But after hawking May for four and six, he wanted too much of a good thing and fell in the same over chasing another boundary. A little more patience would have been invaluable. Then another ball out not playing a stroke. Wade Seckham checked his shot attempting a sweep and was May's fourth victim. Through it all, Alan Border was again the lone class act Yet another half century giving Queensland some hope of survival. Pickle smashed 36 in a 71 run stand with Border before Gillespie beat him for pace and he struck again trapping Jackson in front for eight. Border edged closer to his century but May claimed his wicket on 94 and he wrapped up the innings finishing with six for 83. The Crow Eaters leapfrog Queensland into second place on the shield ladder. Dion Heyman, Seven Nightly News.